Welcome to my laptop. Today we are going to discuss loop diuretics. In loop diuretics, we divide it into two categories. Phenoxyacetic acid derivative and the sulfonamide derivative. In phenoxyacetic acid, you will see the eth acrynic acid is actually the phenoxyacetic acid. And the sulfonamide derivatives, you will see the three drugs. Bumatinide, furosemide, torsemides. They are actually the sulfonamide derivatives. So here, loop diuretics, you will see four drugs. Bumatinide, eth acrynic acid, furosemide and torsemides. So, uh, actually loop diuretics act in on the ascending limb of loop of Henle. So main action of the loop diuretic is as the name indicate that loop, these are the diuretic that act on the loop of Henle. So this is the main point. And as diuretic work, diuretic actually increase the volume of the urine. So here is the case, loop diuretic also increase the volume of the urine. So first of all, we will discuss the normal mechanism and then we will discuss how loop diuretic act on the ascending loop of Henle. So here you see that this is the basic structure of the nephron and here you see this is the glomerulus and here you see this is the Bowman's capsule, Bowman's capsule and here is the proximal convoluted tubule and this is the loop of Henle, loop of Henle. In that situation, uh, we categorize loop of Henle into two. Descending loop of Henle and ascending loop of Henle. Descending loop of Henle is relatively small and ascending loop of Henle is relatively large in diameter. And this is the case. And actually loop diuretic act on the ascending loop of Henle. This is the main point. At what, at what point do you see the loop diuretic act? You will see at the ascending, ascending loop. So this is the case one. And in that situation, uh, you will see this is the distal convoluted tubule and here, and here is the collecting duct. So in that situation, you will see this one. In that situation, you first of all know that the in the descending loop of Henle, water absorbed. Here is the point where the water absorbed in the descending loop. This is the case. Water first moves in the interstitial space and finally into the blood vessels. So here is the case. But in ascending, you will see the absorption of the different ions. So here you see that this is the tubular cell and in that situation you will see absorption of the four ions sodium potassium and chloride so here you see that three ions will absorb in that situation what are these ions three ions and here you will see that the sodium potassium and two chloride here is the two chloride actually absorb in that situation so that's why we call it NK, NKCC. So it means one sodium, one potassium and two chloride absorb from the ascending loop into the cell. So this is the case. And in that situation, now these ions will move into the blood. How? Here you see that the potassium, here is the case you will see that the potassium in the cell move in the first interstitial and then into the blood. So in that situation, sodium move inside. And this is actually done by the sodium potassium pump. And exchange for that, you will see the uh, potassium from the blood move into the interstitial and finally into the cell. So here is the sodium potassium pump. This is the exchange of the case. And in that situation, you will see uh, from the tubule, you will see the absorption of the potassium and from the blood, you will see the absorption of the potassium. So, potassium accumulate in the tubule. So, this is the case. When lot of potassium from the tubule and from the blood, so here is the case. 
from two sides you will see the absorption of the potassium then what will happen then lot of potassium accumulate in the cell tubular cell in that situation now potassium will move from high to low concentration in that situation you will see the potassium from the cell move into the tubule again back so this is the case potassium now move from the tubule into the lumen tubule and now in that situation you will see the increase in the positivity or in the tubule now the tubular positivity increase due to the re uh, due to the back of the potassium from the cell into the tubule now what will happen two ions divalent having two positive charge ions like the calcium and the magnesium start moving in the interstitial and finally into the blood two ions divalent ion move due because here after when the potassium diffuses into the tubule the positivity increase and in exchange for that calcium and magnesium through the parallel cellular between the cell the calcium and uh, magnesium move in the blood so this is the normal mechanism then if the if we use loop diuretics then what will happen actually loop diuretics comes we take the loop diuretics and loop diuretics comes into the blood when the loop diuretics come into the blood so here you see you have to remember at the proximal convoluted tubule and talking about proximal convoluted tubule you have to remember two excretory system acid excretory system and base excretory system so in that situation uh, here you can see uh, like the loop diuretic move in the blood drug we take the uh, drug loop diuretic and that moving in the blood from the blood at the proximal convoluted tubule through the excretory system the loop diuretics loop diuretics move into the tubule loop move into the tubule so this is the case i'm talking about loop diuretic then loop this loop diuretics move in the descending and ultimately reach at that ascending and when the loop diuretic reach at that point then what will happen in that situation this loop diuretics block the sodium potassium chloride co transporter so in that situation this transporter has been blocked then what will happen that it mean that this sodium cannot move inward potassium cannot move inward chloride cannot move inward so in that situation when the potassium in uh, you will see the in that situation you will see the never accumulation of the potassium if there is no accumulation of the potassium then potassium will not move into the tubule and in that situation calcium and magnesium also cannot move into the blood so this is the whole process if i block this nkcc co transporter then whole process blocked so this is the case and keep remember just like the thiazide thiazide also act in that way if you see my previous video then it's mean that the sodium sodium potassium and the chloride remain in the tubule and it will move at the distal convoluted tubule and finally into the collecting duct and in that situation what will happen when the sodium concentration remains or high in the tubule then what will happen here at the principal cell if you see that the principal cell are actually present at the late distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct so in that situation you will see the sodium from the tubule and the chloride move inward into the principal cell and in that situation if you see that this sodium this sodium move into the blood and exchange for that potassium move into the cell and here if you see that the, this chloride move in that situation but keep remember in exchange for that when the sodium chloride move inward as you see that the potassium move inside the cell through the atpase so in that situation you will see the potassium move outward this is the main point and 
you have to focus on sodium and chloride move inside the cell and exchange for that potassium move inward. So it means that loop diuretic indirectly loses the calcium. It means that the potassium accumulate in the cell and ultimately potassium release in the urine. So it means the, now the potassium has been lost. So this is the case. So hope so you uh, got the main point. Main action is on the proximal and indirectly affect the different mechanism. So this is the mechanism of the loop diuretics. Next, you have to remember that you will never take NSAID along with the loop diuretics as we have discussed that the NSAID and non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs will not be taken along with the loop diuretics. Why? In that situation, you will see that the NSAID actually block the production of the prostaglandin. So this is the case. If there is no prostaglandin, you will see that the blood flow, blood flow to the glomerulus will also be decreased. So here if you see that NSAID, if you take NSAID, NSAID block the production of the renal prostaglandin and if there is no prostaglandin, blood flow through the glomerulus will also be decreased. So in that situation, as we discussed here that loop diuretic reach revealed through two ways and through the secretory system and through through the secretory system and through the filtrate it means if there is low filtrate then you will see the low amount of the loop diuretic so this is the case and in that situation in that situation uh, hope so you got the point you will never take the acid why and if you see that the, these ions increase in the tubule, then water will prefer to retain with them. And in that situation, if the water retain with them, the overall volume of the urine will increase. So this is the whole process. Next, we will discuss the actions and the uses. First of all, you will see diuresis. As we discussed, the loop diuretics block the channel and ions retain in the tubule and water will prefer to... Uh, Keep remember that the ions, ions and water are basically the most closely friends. When there is a ions, then water will also be present in that situation. So this is the case. First of all, we will discuss the diuretic diuresis of the loop diuretic. So here you see, if you see the dose, dose on x-axis and response on the y-axis. So if if here you see if this person here is a person if this person take loop diuretic furosemide let's call and in that situation you will see a sigmoid curve in that situation. So here you see at that position if he start taking diet and the diet must be equal to the thrust hold value. If the dose below the thrust hold value, then you will never see any diuretic effect. But if the dose reach the diuretic, uh, thrust hold value, then you will see the starting of the diuretic effect. When I increase the dose, then what will happen? Then the response will also increase rapidly. So here you will see that the response will increase rapidly in that situation. And if I further increase the dose, then the response will become constant. Here, if I increase uh, dose further and further and further and further, then the response will become constant. That's why it is the ceiling effect. What is ceiling effect? When I increase the dose, then the response will become constant. So you will see three points, thrust hold, rapid response and ceiling effect. So this is the diuresis. And next, hypercalciuria. Diure loop diuretic increase the amount of calcium in the urine. So here you see that as we have discussed that the, this block, if I loop diuretic block this channel, then what will happen? 
then the potassium will not move into the tubule and ultimately there is no positivity and ultimately the calcium and the magnesium will not move inside the blood through the paracellular space. So it, it means that the calcium and magnesium prefer to retain in the tubule. So in that situation ultimately the calcium and the magnesium move in the urine. So in that situation you will see that the hyper calcium release in the urine so we can use loop diuretic when here is a person and it has lot of calcium in the blood then physician will prescribe loop diuretic why because this person has lot of calcium and now we have to remove calcium from his body then what will happen if I uh, if I prescribe loop diuretic, then what will happen? That the calcium from his body will excrete through the urine. So this is the case. Hypercalciuria. This is the case. And next is the venodilation. Vasodilation. So in that situation, loop diuretics also affect the blood vessel. So here, if you see that here is the blood vessel. And when, uh, when I take loop diuretic, then what will happen? In that situation, loop diuretic dilate the blood vessels by the increment in the prostaglandin synthesis. So, when prostaglandin synthesis, then prostaglandin dilate this. When this blood vessel dilate, then what will happen? Then the blood pressure in that situation will decrease. So, it will actually, we see that what will happen in the left ventricle. Left ventricle. As we see that the final release of the blood from the heart is from the left ventricle. So in that situation, the left ventricle release blood into the iota and here is the descending iota. So in that situation, the pressure, filling pressure, what pressure? Filling pressure in the ventricle will reduce in that situation when when the blood vessel dilate then blood pressure decrease so ultimately it affect the left ventricle because the final release of the blood is from the left ventricle so in that situation filling pressure decrease next we will discuss the edema most important most and most important is the use of the edema so we will see we Loop diuretic is the strong, show the strongest diuretic effect and release the water from the body rapidly. So in that situation, if you see that here is a person and this person is presented with the, let's suppose this is a person and presented with the pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema or you can say if it present with the ac acute or you can say chronic actually two phases of the peripheral peripheral edema so in that situation if this person presented with the edema uh, uh, one prescribe physician will prescribe loop diuretics why because it show rapid response and excrete the water through the body rapidly so it means the edema will reduce edema is actually the accumulations of the fluid in the uh, interstitial space so in that situation if the water uh, excrete from the body then ultimately the edema will reduce so you can take loop diuretics for the treatment of the edema next is there is a person and he has lot of potassium in his body then what will happen then this person should take a drug which can excrete potassium from his body then loop diuretic is the option why so here you can see that potassium sodium and chloride move inward and potassium will move outside and potassium as we discussed the potassium loss in the urine so it means the potassium from the body can be easily secreted excreted when we use loop diuretic so in that situation if i if this person take the loop diuretic 
then the potassium which is accumulated in its body will reduce. So this is the case. Simply. And next we will discuss the adverse effects of the loop diuretics. So here you see as like the thiazide same here hypocondition. You can remember it by the Wegman. So pharmacology will be easier for you people when you have a strong grip in, on physiology and you will make mnemonics. Otherwise, pharmacology will be difficult for you people. So, hypo, in what situation hyper, hypo condition Wackman. Mnemonics is Wackman. So here, this Wackman hypovolemia. So this is the volemia. What is mean by volemia? Volemia means low volume of the blood. So as we have discussed that blood, blood volume is inversely proportional to the urine volume. Actually, loop diuretic increase the urine volume. If you see the increase in the urine volume, then automatically the blood volume will decrease. So loop diuretic increase this, automatically blood volume decrease. And if the blood volume decrease, then you will see the hypotension. And you will see the orthostatic hypotension it is actually uh, you people face when the people uh, let's suppose here is a if uh, let's suppose there is a person who is laying and it suddenly stand up from the laying position then he get uh, hypotension that's why which is called the which is also called the lightheadedness or you can say postural hypotension so this is the case in vo volemia hypovolemia next we cut the A from the mnemonics and next move towards the kalemia. Kalemia. So as we discuss here, loop diuretic decrease the level of the potassium in the body. So if the loads of potassium release from our body, then the, you will see the hypokalemia. Hypokalemia. Hypo means low. Kalemia means calcium, emia means blood. Low amount of the potassium in the blood. Next is the M. M for magnesium. Magnesemia. Magnesemia. So you also see the low amount of the magnesium. As we discussed, that the calcium and the magnesium loss in the urine. Then the automatically the level of the calcium in the blood calcium and the magnesium in the blood will reduce. So you see the magnesemia. Next again we cut the A and last is the natremia. So as you see, uh, but you will see hyponatremia. Low level of the nitrogen in the body. But this is the rare case. Because why? Because potassium, uh, sodium loss from that situation, but in that situation potassium can reabsorb. So, a hyponatremia is very, very rare in the loop diuretics. Next is the hyper. In what situation, what substances can increase? So, you will see the hyper, hyper uricemia. First, U stands for uricemia. High level of uric acid in the blood. How? As we see, at the proximal convoluted tubule, excretory and system. So, let's suppose here is a uric acid and in that situation, this is a loop diuretic. Now, they compete that loop diuretic says that he will excrete into the tubule, but uric acid says that the he wants to be excreted by the urine. So, there is a competition between the loop diuretics and the uric acid. So they compete. Uric acid and the loop diuretic competes. But, but the winner is the loop diuretic. Winner is the loop diuretic. So in that situation, instead of uric acid, loop diuretics are excreted into the tubule. It means uric acid will remain in the blood. Will remain in the blood. If the uric acid in blood, then it is causes the hyperuricemia. And if you see the hyperuricemia, then the condition gout, 
deposition of the uric acid in the joints especially in the two joints happens and it result in the gout next is the hyper hyper calciuria high level of calcium in the urine i'm talking about urine so in that situation i see that the low diuretic causes the excretion of the calcium so you again you can remember it by the blood and inversely proportional to urine let's suppose calcium concentration in the blood increase then obviously the amount of the calcium in the blood will decrease so as we know that the if you see the increase in the calcium in the urine that is called the hypercalciuria urea means high calcium in the urine but hypercalcemia if i say hypercalcemia mia then it means that the high level of the calcium in the blood so in that situation group diuretic increase the calcium in the urine and obviously decrease the calcium in the blood so this is the different adverse effect and last most important is the autotoxicity autotoxicity hearing loss by the use of uh, loop diuretic or if i increase the dose or you uh, take the loop diuretic frequently then you face the autotoxicity hearing loss and they also become excessive when we take the loop diuretic loop diuretic along with the echo aminoside which is also the autotoxic drug this is actually the antibiotics and it also cause the autotoxicity both toxic toxicity causing drugs combine then the autotoxicity effect will increase so this is the case this is also the adverse effect of the loop diuretic so these are basically the different adverse effect of the loop diuretic so this is all about the loop diuretics if you have any question then you may ask in the comment section thank you so much